You know, I love documentaries. Um, whenever I'm called to do any documentary jobs, I, I feel it's an opportunity for me to learn something new. I remember when I worked on Onion Fifa's uh, birthday, my eyes was open to so many things that I never knew of about the Yorubas and the Fair. And for me, it was like an, you know, an eye-opener to an encyclopedia, learning about life, learning about I mean, us learning about our heritage, some of the things that even people out there in the world had adopted from us in Africa. So when I'm called to do documentaries, I feel like, okay, okay, it's a journey, and in that journey, I'm going to learn something new. So when I got a job from late Mrs. Oladoni Badmans, at that point, I had some other jobs, some other brief that I got from clients, and I was looking at it, but when I read the story of that woman, I felt that, okay, this is the one I want to do because I grew up going to, then we're living in Ojudubega, I grew up going to come executive, and in that area, there were a lot of things that was happening. That woman had um, an e-tree, and it's called Ducroy, and we we'll go there to get snacks before we go to school. So, I mean, here is somebody that I've been looking up to all my life, my mom would go there, get some snacks and sell, and she was making money. And I'm in the position of doing a documentary. So when I got the brief and I read that story, I felt like, boom, this is what I would like to do. And that was how I jumped into that documentary. I'm the, yeah, I got the brief, but my client told me, and that was what I get from my client most of the time. I just say, you know, it's you, Wilbur, just do your thing, just do your thing. So I jumped on it, and I, did, I, I started working on how I was going to make it more interesting. Like I said, when I'm given a job to do, the first thing I want to do is the concept that suits the story or that suits the idea or the brand. And that was how we got started, yeah. It's a new day and I got a brief and it's time for us to work. So I put a call through some of the team I'm going to work with. Usually I have different people when I'm doing my project. I feel like, okay, who, who's the guy that's going to work with me? I, I have some guys that are cool-headed. I have some, they are very strong, but they can misbehave because power without control is useless. So when I need to work with them, I look at them and say, okay, who do I need in doing this project? Okay, I need to call this, I need to call that. So I pick up a call, I call my, my brother, Banky, who's been working for me for years, and then I called my friend, ND, who is very, very cool-headed. And, you know, I called him, we negotiated, and then, boom, we went to the location somewhere in Banana Island. And usually when I get to location, the first thing I check is the props. What do they have there? Do they have some flower verses? Do they have some picture frames? Do they have, I mean, I look at the furniture, I look at the light fittings, I look at everything, if they have some table lights, and then I look at, all these things to put them together because documentary is deeper than just shooting a, a musical video anything can go you can just put some light gels i mean whatever mistake you make people see it as creativity but uh for documentary it's not like that we are uh, live at the banana island and uh, getting ready to shoot it's actually a documentary i have my crew here it's andy and his back to me and we've been trying to set up Table light there, and we have the flower, and we have KC, TC. TC. All right, so we have TC standing as uh, the object. We have some lights here, we have uh, our LED light. We also have a backlight. We have this one to support the face, although we're supposed to use a soft box, but um, we couldn't lay hand on it while we were coming. And then we have LED there. So we're using two cameras we have Sony Alpha, and then we have Mac 3, that's a kind of 5D Mac 3. Using two other devices because you never can tell, so it's always good to have a backup. So we're all set up now, waiting for our um, clients to come so that we can start interviewing them. I mean, we're doing a lot to put it all together, but I think it's coming nice. And I hope you see the end result by the time we're through. All right. So I got some equipment. I got some. I got a 5D Mark III, and then I got a Sony Alpha for the second camera. Now one other thing I did is I I do not love to joke with my uh, audio devices so I had to use two different audio devices in case one fails there will always be a backup so we we have to mic the man mic all the characters all the people we are going to interview and then we started building the set they said it took a lot while because we wanted some kind of set that when people see when they're watching our job they'll be like okay okay uh, I, I think I like what these guys have done you know 
I was somewhere in Surulere and I was with one of the women whom we interviewed. And she didn't know, I heard her telling her friend that, I, I want boys to eat, I want professional going to buy, but insert everything, don't she? <laughs> you know, these are some of the things I want to hear when my clients are viewing my job. I like to give nothing but the best. Uh, our goal in Ignition Studio is to give premium customer service, nothing but the best. And we're always ready to listen to them. If they say, this is what we want, this is what we want, and then we'll try to give it to them. So. We started filming and we did all the things that we needed to do. It was brief because many of them, they are busy. And then we shot some in some location and we saw, shot some other people in a different location. But we just made it sure that the set was not just empty. Do not make your set empty when shooting documentary. And most of the time, always watch your real author. It is not necessarily mean that because you are shooting interviews people have to look at you or look straight into the camera usually usually it's always good when they are looking somewhere it's called the rule of thought you can have their ear one side of their ear and they're looking at one side of the screen and these are some of the things that we have been able to put together the thing is this by the time we were filming we we're doing the job i mean it was fun there were days too that you know there were times that we had to go on break crack some jokes and you know all right all right so we're in banana island and we're TC, not only that, I'm with this man here. You know, he just shocked me now. He said he doesn't eat meat. And I'm like, are you Guru Maharaj or what? It looks like one, isn't it? You know, one day we were somewhere too, and some ladies were, they just love this man. They don't know that he's married. If, he ca if your wife catches her, I don't want marry <laughs> And they were asking me, they say, is it Jesus? Because he has beers and all those things, you know. I mean, he, he, he gets children, but he looks young. You know the funny thing about this guy with all these hip hop entertainment load, this guy knows the Bible more than me. He preaches for me. <laughs> preaches for me. I, I saw something this for the bank. Can you see his hand? Can you see his finger? He even painted his finger. He ain't gay, but I don't know why. You know. So we're having fun, we're on break now, we're shooting and Bank is the one behind the camera, he's been trying to take some shots. I saw him shake it and I knew that he's hungry, so I've told him to bring food. We are going to take a shot of food. So we're having fun in Banana Island. Take a look at the environment. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this beautiful? Make the job. And by the time I finished shooting the job, I took everything back to the system. And of course, with the help of your sound, your graphics, some of the motion graphics, and some of the editing, you had life to it. And by the time we finished the job, I was at um, Bishop uh, Vining Memorial, where they were going to play this um, project. And a lot of people were there, a lot of dignitaries were there. And I was watching. Many a time, I've been in an event shows that they are seeing our artwork, and I'm seeing the reaction of the people. I keep hearing people say, the audio is clean, the audio is clean. I went to the guys in the control room and I asked them, is there any problem? They said, no, the picture is okay and the sound is okay. I didn't even have to wait to make sure that the event finished. By the time I heard that, I was cool, I, I was okay. So I said, okay, mission accomplished. And that was how I left. The, the, working, working on that project was fun. I mean, working with a lot of people. I mean, it, it's a good thing when you tell people, this is what you want, you're directing a shot and they are listening to you, it shows that they kind of see something in you that you're not seeing. They believe that you can do it. They are seeing that you have a potential. There's something about you that you can do. So when we are placed in a position to do something, we should give our best and just be us and not try to be anybody else. I tell people, be the best you can. Be yourself and just do your thing. Art for me is expressing it in your own best way, in your, your own little way. And when you throw that in out there, boom, people just tell you we like it. So that was how we do that. We did that job. We went to some places in Ujudubega to film. We went to different places. We went to Surule. But above all, the most astonishing thing about that project that I learned about that woman is that she was a generous woman. She was a nice woman. She will house people, say like 27 people feeding them. I even heard somebody saying that she feeds uh, security men in the estate. Who does that? I mean, she will give gifts, she will call her doctors, she will call people to come eat. And like I said in the beginning, when you are doing documentaries, there are a lot of things to learn. Now, we eventually shot, and when I was editing, I shot on 4K anyway with the Sony Alpha. And when I was editing, I saw the depth of the 4K. 
I had to use more of the 4K shot because, I mean, picture quality is something we also don't joke with. And that's where the world is going to. Yes, some people shoot on 6K, 7K, 8K, whatever case. But I was just cool with the 4K because I just knew that the people I'm giving it to, they are still going to watch it on a full HD or probably a 4K um, smart TV. So we did the job and it was successful. As I have always said, starting a project and finishing successfully is what makes you a creative person. I mean, if you do a job and at the end you can't make your client happy, then you are not a good client service provider. I mean, that is what made this all about and that is what, you know, pass mark is starting a job and finish it successfully. I'm st I still have some other stuff that I'm going to explain. I will show them and I will do them. Yes, for this project that we did, the lighting, I didn't use some, I wanted to use um, what's it called? Um, some softbox light, but it didn't get to us on time and we needed to shoot. And we were still able to get what we needed. And my name is Wilbur till I come your way again. Don't forget this Passmark. And on this episode of Passmark, this is made. M-A-D-E. Our way made it. I'm Wilbert, and I'm just there. The Lone Ranger doing things in a long way. Bye.